Ministers. My Lords, I wish to pay tribute to the noble Lord, Lord Alton, for the passionate and determined way he has pursued this vital issue over many, many years. As the first Armenian in the British Parliament and as a descendant of a genocide survivor, I owe him a particular debt. I was born in Iraq to an Armenian parents made refugees by the 1915 genocide, in which more than one million ethnic Armenians were massacred by the Ottomans. I say I'm a genocide survivor, and in 33 countries around the world, that description would be acknowledged. Yet, in the country in which I have made my home is not one of them. My great-grandfather, who lived in Erzurum, in what is now northeastern Turkey, was executed along with his sons by the Ottoman forces. My grandmother, then just a teenager, escaped with her mother, and the two of them walked barefoot for weeks before finally finding sanctuary in Mosul in northern Iraq. There were the lucky ones. Many other women and children were sent on a death march across the desert from which they would never return. Half a century later, my family and I immigrated from Iraq to Ireland, where I studied medicine before moving to London in the 1990s, where I have dedicated my career to the NHS. As the first Armenian in this house, I was overjoyed when President Biden decided a year ago to break with his predecessors and recognize the Armenian genocide. The vote in the US House of Representatives in October 2020 was overwhelming. It was a hugely emotional moment for me and for the Armenians all over the world. Most European countries, including France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, and Sweden, have recognized the Armenian genocide, but the UK has not. As Hitler planned the Holocaust in 1939, he asked his fellow Nazis, who, after all, speaks today of the annihilation of the Armenians? Unless we, as members of the international community, call out genocidal violence wherever it occurs, its predators will feel encouraged, perpetrators will feel encouraged to continue. We should use the experience not to fuel bitterness and revenge, but to set a stake in the ground and declare, never again. Never again, not just for the Armenians, but for people all over the world. We cannot protect the Uyghurs in Xinjiang, the Rohingyas in Myanmar, the Tigrans in Ethiopia and others experiencing genocidal attacks in the 21st century without telling the truth about the past. Indeed, sacrificing the truth about the past for the convenience of the present is dangerous. In 2020, the invasion of Nagorno-Karabakh by the Azerbaijan, supported by Turkey, forced 90 thousand Armenians to flee their homes to escape the threat of ethnic cleansing. And the world stood by with few consensus, consequences for either Azerbaijan or Turkey. So this bill is not simply about addressing a historic injustice. It is about how our understanding of the past shapes our actions in the present. It is about giving the full message of meaning when we say never again. I ask then, my noble lords, that you give this bill your full support. My lords, I too would like to congratulate my 